Well, cognitive behavior therapy is one of the forms of therapy that grew up in this century more. The, the original ones before that, like Freud was the beginning of it, way back a century ago, you know, where he thought that people can free associate and they can just let it be relaxed state and they can get to things that have to do with their history and maybe just talking them out when a, when a safe place would work. Well, that was helpful to a lot of people. And I had original training in that too. And that's where I started out. But for a lot of people, that wasn't sufficient for intense trauma or very disturbing experiences. And we needed something more. And, uh, and there was uh, an opportunity that happened uh, with a man out in California who was a therapist. And he got interested in acupuncture. And uh, he's the one that came up with uh, uh, other ways that you could stimulate things there. But anyway, what Freud had discovered originally too, there's a lot of power in what, our, what we think. So what began to emerge is beyond psychoanalysis that our thoughts had a lot of power of creating things in our lives. And so that's where cognitive behavior therapy came from. And especially the, the cognitive part of it, the realizing that our thoughts had a lot of effect on our lives. Because what we think, we have a scene or an image or memory that's associated with it, and it triggers whatever the emotions are connected with that. Well, in cognitive therapy, we just learn to be more conscious of those thoughts rather than being, being remote and they're happening to us all the time and we're feeling out of control and like it's running our, our brains. But we have learned tools that we can use to uh, keep the thoughts that maybe help us feel good or safe or happy. And we can use more of those tools to stop thinking the thoughts that create hell for us or create fear or create terror or create anger, which all comes out of some vulnerable feeling because anger is a secondary emotion. It comes out of a more vulnerable emotion. And so that's one of the values of cognitive therapy that teaches us to be tuned into what we're thinking and to know that our thoughts are not just thoughts, but they're acts of creation. And, uh, and now in quantum physics, there's an enormous amount of study that shows mind is just really all interconnected in one unified field. And so that it means it's just not wasting our time when we use tools to help get on top of the thoughts that are disturbing our peace and our health and our happiness or even our relationships or our successes. But if we can discover those thoughts and use those tools to change those thoughts, then in a sense, we change our lives and we are more in charge of our lives. Certainly, if you'd like to learn more about these methods or these tools or the combinations of them and how they work, I'll be glad to talk with you about it. You could contact me by phone or by email, or you could call me and we could make an appointment or two, and we could discuss it more in relation to your area, your issues, your problem areas and what would be effective for you to do together. So I'd be happy to explore those things with you. I have a, uh, people who want to come in person can see me in New York City or in Westport, Connecticut. Um, others may prefer to have a session by Zoom or telephone or FaceTime or things like that. So that's possible too, especially during this coronavirus situation. So whatever works for you is uh, I'm open to, to explore with you. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have about what this therapy is like.